Hello everyone, and in this video, I'm going to show you this incredible game-changing tool, which allows you to create some insane animation. I'll run you through what the tool does, and then how it's going to change the animation industry, and I'll show you some of my own examples, along with some tips and tricks. Okay, let's get into it. So, the tool in question is called Toon Crafter. At the time of filming, it is in the early stages, but it's proving to be very impressive. And I can see this tool laying the groundwork for future tools like this. In its simplest form, you give it two frames and it creates an animation between the both of them. So let's check out some examples. So for this one, we can see a passport being stamped and it does an incredible job at keeping the text visible throughout the animation. And it even has the shadow moving from the stamp moving upwards. This would be really difficult to do with other tools, as they normally warp the text. And for these, they've used screen grabs for the film Spirited Away. As you can see, they've only got two frames, but the animation created has all of the fabric and the hair on the girl moving, and it even has the seagulls moving in the background. And this one's impressive, as the train in the water, the frames look nearly identical, but because one of the frames is a tiny bit different, the tool can notice that it's moving through water, so it animates the splashes and the train moving forward. And again this one, each frame is very similar, but as you can see the second frame has the man moving closer towards the shining object. Again in this one there's not much difference between the two frames, but the tool has recognised that it's a horse, and it creates some really realistic horse movements. And for this one we've got a zoom in kind of video, and to get that all they did was crop in slightly to frame 1. And the tool must have noticed that one of them was a bit zoomed in, so it created a kind of zoom in camera effect through the corridor. And here in between frames her head is slightly looking towards the left, so it's animated her head perfectly, and even added in a blink. I would not be able to tell that this wasn't from the film itself. And here we have a girl with her hair kind of blown by air, and then the second frame it's kind of calmed down a bit. And the animation does just that. It creates the sense that she's been blown by some wind. And the animation on the hair and the clothing looks very professional. And here are some comparisons with other similar tools. And as you can see the Toon Crafter version is just way better than the others. The other ones have a lot of morphing and disfigurement to them, they can't keep the composition of the animation, and Toon Crafter just holds it perfectly. And here's another example, where as you can see all the other ones where it starts moving it just becomes a blurry mess, but Toon Crafter is sharp and it holds that composition. Again another one with a car, and the other ones just are a complete mess. And it also works for sketches as well. So here you can see two frames of a donkey or a horse walking, and it puts them together and creates this really nice looking sketch. And then if you have a sketch animation you can also feed it a colourised version of one of the frames, and then it colours in that whole drawn animation, which is pretty insane. And it's nice that they do say there are limitations with this tool. There are two frames of this man in a what seems to be some kind of fighter jet, and in the final video it's got part of the ship but it's moving about everywhere. I guess the tool didn't recognise that this black strip is part of the ship and shouldn't be moving about like that. And as you can see here, the two frames shows a man walking away, and the second frame is a man walking into the shot, but the tool thinks that it's the same man and it merges them together. But we are still in the early days for this tool so I'm guessing they will work out these tweaks. There are loads of really impressive examples showcasing this tool, so I'll make sure to leave a link to it in the description box below. So now let's have a look at creating some of our own animations. So from this website all you have to do is click on the Hugging Face demo, and all the links you will find down below. So how it works is you upload one frame here, and then the second frame here, and it should animate in between both. Now I would leave these settings the same to start with, and you can feel free to change them as you experiment a bit more. And down below here it shows the settings that were used for these specific videos. So that passport stamp one used these settings, so you can use them as reference. 
So what I'm actually going to do is I downloaded some of the images from the demo videos that they had on their website, and I want to see if I get the same result. So I've got the frame one and two of this character moving their head. I might just write in an anime scene just to see if that works. I'll go generate. It may take a little bit of time to generate, but it's not too long. So let's have a look at the finished video. And it looks really good. Now, the downside is the generations are very short. They're only a couple of seconds long, but the results are generally pretty good. And from here, you can choose to download it. I'll be showing you my method of upscaling videos later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Now I'm going to try that passport animation that we saw earlier. And they actually have the example down here, so I'm going to copy the settings. Now the only thing that's different is the seed number, so I'll change that to 7, 8, 9. And let's see how that looks. I think it looks really good, but the funny thing is it doesn't look exactly the same as what they showed on their website. So I'll try a different seed and see how that comes up. And here's the result with a different seed number. And again, it looks really good. And here's the video I got of the person holding the gem. And the face gets a bit weird, but it does create a really cool effect on the shining gem that she's holding. Now I'm going to show you another website which uses this model to create animations. So this website uses other people's computers to generate the animations for you, and you get a free amount of time to use. And then if you run out, you can choose to pay a very small amount to generate more animations. But I think it's worth it as the results generally are better. So when you jump onto this website, you'll notice they've already got an example running on the page. It's a really nice looking video of a character looking from left to right. Now the difference with this site is you can add up to 10 images, not just two. So here you can see they've got the character looking to the upper left and then slowly moving over to the right on the last frame. And you can change the width and the height of the video from a minimum of 256 pixels to a maximum of 768 pixels. You also get to add your prompt and negative prompt. So let's try a few examples. All you have to do is click on clear file to get rid of those images, and then click on this little cloud icon and then you can drag or click and upload your images. I'll try this dual image again, but with this new site to see if it's any difference. And I'll bump up the maximum resolution. And you can also choose to interpolate the footage as well. So it adds more frames into it. Click on run and just give it a short while to process. The result came out pretty good. It looks very similar to the other one, but with a bit more resolution. Okay, so now I'm going to try with my own images that I created in Midjourney. So I've got this image of a samurai, and the second frame I've just zoomed in slightly. I've also added in to the prompt a samurai in a field, and in the negative prompt, bad quality. So hopefully that should help. And I'll click run, and we'll see what that looks like. And it's created this awesome shot. It looks so cool. It's done a really cool action-like zoom, and it's even put some kind of leaves blowing in the background. That's a really nice touch. So yeah, very, very impressed with this shot. And from here, you can download it. So here are a few more examples. You can get quite creative with using the software. As for this one, I used this blue flame. And as this website allows you to use up to 10 frames, I did that and it created a longer video, and it came out looking really nice. It's got this kind of animation stop frame style to it, and you can use this as an element in any of your videos. And in these videos, the software actually saw that there was snow in the shot, so it added moving snowfall in the video, which was really impressive. And in this other similar shot, it did the same thing, but with falling leaves instead. For these videos, all I did was have one image and then I cropped in slightly for each different frame and the video just kind of added a zoom effect. So now I'll show you how to create your custom frames in Midjourney. You can use other software as well, but I'm using Midjourney for this example. So I've got this image of this boy in the rain and what I want for the final animation is it to zoom in and to have the character blink. But this image is a bit close up, so what you can do is use the zoom feature. So either click on zoom 1.5 or two times, and it will add a bit more room around the image. 
So this is the zoomed out image and I'm really happy with it. And I also created one a little bit more cropped in. So for this one, I want him to blink his eyes in the animation. So I'll go to vary region and I'll select around his eyes. And I'll write in eyes closed. You can also do this in Adobe Photoshop with generative fill, or you can use Photopea, which is a free website. It's pretty much a Photoshop alternative. So you can use this magic replace tool. You can select around the eyes and write in closed eyes and click replace. And you just have to make sure you watch a short ad, but it only lasts a few seconds. And there you go, it's created some closed eyes. Just remember to change the model here as it may have a realistic model on and you don't want real eyelids on your character. And then I just added these frames into the model and it created this video. It's added in the rain effect in the background and it's animated the eyes perfectly. You can use this tool in Mid Journey or other software to add in different things to your frame. So in this one, I have a cup of coffee and I wanted a hand to grab the mug. So I drew an area around here and then I added in a hand reaching to grab the cup of coffee, hand, anime hand, and it created this, which is just what I was looking for. Then I added these frames into that website and it created this animation. They're not perfect, but I think it did a really good job. I did a similar shot, but with another character and I added frames with a different mouth. I also added some sun rays in some other frames and it added it into the animation. As it zooms in, the sunlight's in the corner and he begins to talk. Some of the mouth animations aren't perfect, but I could easily improve that if I wanted to. And then combining some of the scenes that I've created, I added some voiceover and a bit of music and you can create some really cool shots. and you can create some really cool short videos. Now, this one's just a demo, but it's just a glimpse to see what's possible. Here's an experiment that I tried. I drew two faces in Photoshop, one with a normal blank face, and then the other one I changed the expression. So I added in some angry features. And the video that it generated was really impressive. As you can see, the animation for changing her facial features look really professional. I am really impressed with what it's done with just two very simple images. Okay, and now I'm going to show you how you can upscale your videos. For the first method, I'll show you the free way to do it. CapCut have a video upscaler. So you just upload your video here and it says it's going to upscale the resolution by two times. Then just click on upscale. And as you can see, it's done a really good job at sharpening up all the details. And then you can choose to export it. The other method I use to increase the resolution of my videos is using Topaz Video AI. So I've uploaded that video. And then from the output resolution, you can change, you have a lot of options. So I generally go four times upscale. You can choose the frame rate. I'll stick to the original, which was eight frames per second. And then here you have a bunch of different options. I'm just going to keep the auto settings on here. And then I change my encoder to H.265, change the quality level to high and export. And the results look amazing. It's really sharpened up all those edges and it just looks a lot cleaner. Okay, so that's it for this video. And I believe this is the start of something big in the animation space. I know it's going to be very controversial and I know it's going to have a big effect on many people's jobs and the industry as a whole. I think when we add them to our workflow, it will just make getting our projects and visions out there much easier and quicker. So if anybody has any comments about this software, please leave them down below. I would love to hear your feedback. And if you gained anything from this video, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you would like to see any of our other stuff, then feel free to click the image you can see on screen. Thanks for watching.